right, guys. So, what is the most horrible sight on the pasture? Smoke. Yeah, it's not so much the smoke as it is the wildfire that's creating the smoke. Um, we're on a red flag day today, so I thought I'd take up a serious um, topic with you. And I just want you to give it some thought. It's not meant to you have to run out and do a bunch of stuff or anything. I need you just to think about it. Um, because the alternative, we've seen it. And it's horrible, horrible. So, um, okay, let's get right into it. Uh, every place that, that you will ever live has a zone. Um, it, it's whether you're in a mudslide, a fire zone, a uh, earthquake zone, tornado zone, whatever. You have a national disaster. There is no part of the world that has never been touched by national disaster. So, one of the things that you need to know is you need to know what is prone in your area. For us, we live on the prairies of Oklahoma. It's flat. It's windy. We're more prone to fires, tornadoes, and here lately earthquakes, but they're on the downside. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, so, yeah, we know how to deal with tornadoes. We all have tornado plans. The one thing that gets overlooked, though, is fire plans. If you have livestock, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm tired. Um, if you have livestock and you have a home and children, you're going to have a plan to get your family out. I mean, it's just a given. You, you do uh, school fire drills. You do home fire drills. If you have a two-story house, every window or everybody knows where the window is that has the ladder to get out. Um, you pre-plan. You, you prepare. You do everything you can in case what is prone to your area actually happens to you on your farm. Now, that being said, we... Uh, have a plan that is implemented year-round. Because we live here, we know about it, we plan for it. Our back 40 acres is tall with the cattle and the horses, then comes the sheep and the goats and it's shorter, and then it by the house is even shorter. So um, I'm going to pop in some clips just because these kind of explain it a little bit better. So this is our south. It has the longest grass. Now if we turn hopefully I won't make you too drunk from this fence over is all of this now RJ how come this is shorter do we mow it no the sheep keep it eight down some more sheep out here than there's cows in the back okay so they keep it and we might keep a few extra each year just to keep it a little short huh rather have it a little short and warm a couple extra times a year than have a fire wipe out the entire thing right Okay, then as you move forward from here up around the house, what what kind of what do we have up there, son? Real short grass. Up here at the house, you can see there's very little grass. Okay. So, um, and from right here, you can see all three stages: yeah. short, medium, long. Um, okay. Most wildfires are commonly called down here grass fires, and the less the gra less grass, the slower they move so here's where you can get a handle on it all right so we take year-round prevention um, by controlling the height of our grass correct yep. all right now we do something else to when um, we have wildfire in play and what is that Blue water okay so we'll go up here and we'll start showing you all that all right the second step is water we put these soaker hoses on the end of our garden hose stretch them out which just the garden hose allows it to go and we still have it out from over there but it allows it to go and we stretch it as far as we can and put the soaker hose part sticking up so it throws water up in a V up in a V okay now we also put it between the fire and the shortest grass correct yeah. as far out as we can get the animals are on the opposite side yeah. and we do that up here at the house now what is in this front house pen with no grass. Right. The okay. sheep and goats, everything off the pasture is cleared and brought in here through that west gate. Right here we have two sacrifice pins as we call them. They uh, don't, they always have stuff in them. Nothing ever grows. 
stuff as in livestock, right? Yes, livestock in them. That okay. And then we also what around them? Water around them. Okay, we don't want anything to flare up. We do feed hay in, in some of these stalls. We don't want those to flare up. All right. And while we do have an arena out there that's totally dirt and also another safe zone, who uses that and who do we have arrangements with? Our neighbor brings and runs his cows onto it so that way they can't uh, burn up either. So um, out here, there's another part that we also, while those hoses are out here watering, again, the soaker hoses along that that side or even this side if the wind shifts and it comes from the west we can put the soaker hoses wherever we need to but what is the last resort we stand out here and physically what we take jeans and dip them in water troughs and get a bucket of water and we take them and we follow around and we just hit the fire with the jeans and it beats it out so they get wet and they're heavy and it just basically and so we can out. we can smother it out anywhere along our uh uh barrier now will all, all these right? things work for you no they won't every farm and every pasture situation um, is different if you live in timber lying like ridges and that is our plan going to work for you no it's not you have all the trees you have all the leaves you have other you have other things you have to deal with um, what i will tell you is talk to your fire department talk to um, your uh, extension agents those two things can tell you the best scenario, the worst scenario, um, even the fire department response time to your area. Make sure that you've called 911 and gave them directions to your home and let them know that, that you're there. Let them mark you on the map. Um, in a national disaster, even if you have a bunker, if nobody knows you're there, they're not coming to dig you out. So letting 911 know you're there, number one, is of the utmost importance. Um, Number two, be prepared to take responsibility for your livestock. There isn't people that come. If a wildfire rolls through and all my livestock was out there, and God forbid, I don't even want to think about it, they all perished. The ones that are laying there weak, whining, and still alive, it's my responsibility to take care of that you can't call a vet um, unfortunately there's only one way to deal with that and it's not pretty and me as the owner would have to do that um, it's not about euthanasia it's a horrid sight and it's not something I ever wanted to deal with so we have plans we ask that you just evaluate your property evaluate what you have and know that you can at least attempt to take care of things.